<laughs> You're okay. tired, Arch. It's 4.30. You must be absolutely exhausted. Yeah, well, it's tiring when you get up at 4 a.m. Um, right, so... We got up at 9. Yeah, I get up at 4 a.m. Oh, stop. He loves to perpetuate a narrative that he's like... No, I got up at 4 a.m. to go to the toilet. <laughs> okay. Well, welcome back to uh, another episode of Property Couple. Couple! <laughs> November edition. Uh, hello. November edition. Welcome back to Property Couple. <laughs> couple. Uh, uh, welcome back to uh, Property uh, Couple. Uh, uh, this is uh, the investor uh, and uh, I am the brains. No, I'm kidding. Actually, I'm not kidding. Okay, right. I, uh, this is the beauty, this is the beast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in this video, what we're going to be doing? We're going to be going through the potential floor plan uh -huh. of our first property investment. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So the last that anybody on here has seen of this is simply a walkthrough from a viewing with the vendor. Since then, the property has completed, we got the keys, the refurb started, and then cow, Boris Johnson locked down the UK. But lucky for us, construction continues. The rip out has begun. I'm gonna be inserting clips into this video of um, updates that we've been getting from our build team remotely, which has been amazing on, on WhatsApp and stuff like that. But what we want to do is show you the idea of what this is going to look like inside and just show you the potential refurb opportunity here. So, can I just make one point? There's something I absolutely love on the flat on the floor plans. What is it? The little fold in the bed sheet. Oh, that's so that nice. Phenomenal, like the detail there on the floor plan. <laughs> that's uh, really nice. I like that. Actually, I'll let you take it away from yeah. where we walk through the front door. Okay. Or not, because the front door's changing, isn't it? Well, so it's still a door. It's still a front door, but it's easier not to remove it. And it's another easy escape route if there's ever a fire or anything like that. Bedroom one used to be a reception room, but here we're going to have a double bed and we're going to have wardrobe, bedside table, desk and chair, chest of drawers and potentially a fridge freezer. So this will actually be a really nice room because the individual that will be staying here will have their own private little entrance. Which is really nice um, because it feels like you've got your own property. Yeah, <laughs> When awesome. In fact, this I is... I might go and live there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go and live in our HMO? Yeah. So for anyone who's not aware, an HMO is a house of multiple occupancy. And this house that we're converting here is right by a hospital. So it makes a lot of sense for it to be an HMO because of these sort of nurses, doctors, people like that, that need to be living in a property close to work. And also they might not have family yet. They might still be living in um, you know, shared homes. It's really common. I've lived in a ton of HMOs in, in London and stuff like that. So here we go. That's the first room. That's the first room. And then as you pass through, there'll be a communal area. So this used to be the second reception room. And here there'll be, you know, a table, dining room table and a couch and a TV where the housemates will, you know, they can they can hang out there if they want. Feels a little bit more like a home as opposed to having just a room. In a lot of um, HMOs, for instance, like ones that I've lived in in London, they've taken away the like reception area, like the communal area. And that actually meant that the HMO was uh, an illegal HMO because it didn't have any communal space. Everyone had to like eat in their own bedrooms, but I didn't realize this until later on in my learning and finding out more about property, that I was actually living in a property that was basically illegal. Could have claimed a lot of that rent back. <laughs> and this is where it's quite interesting. So there's a walkway along the side of the house. It's like a, um, an entry that runs between both the houses because these are terrace houses. And we are using that entry to the house as the main front door for everybody that isn't living in bedroom one. I'm just gonna jump in there because I didn't actually film any content of the alleyway that's running by the side of the house. But I need to add that there is a communal um, walkway, but it's only for our property and the property next door. People used to use it um, to take the bins out from the back of the house and push them to the front of the road so that you didn't have to walk your bin 
through your property. So yeah, we're going to be walking down that alleyway, come through into the previous like utility area, would you mm -hmm. call it? Yeah. And that's the new front door for the entire property, apart from bedroom one, as you said, mm -hmm. that have the option to use either the main front door or their personal one. And then at the end of the kitchen is where we're going to put the bathroom. So this at the moment, in the current plan, we are looking into options of potentially having en suites in each of the rooms. So we'll update you if that does happen. But the current plan is to have a bathroom downstairs that everybody can use. Having a downstairs bathroom in um, this part of the country where this in property is is not unusual. Quite a lot of properties in the UK, especially from like the Midlands up, have a downstairs bathroom that's like the main family bathroom. They don't have bathrooms upstairs. I see, we've seen it quite a lot with our viewings, especially mm. in like Stoke and further. But yeah, I won't say the location of this property, but it's not unusual, just in case anyone's thinking, I don't want to walk through the kitchen to go to the bathroom. It's, it's really quite normal. I think another point to make as well is the reason the kitchen is like tucked away, i.e. like all the way on the end of the property, mm. is to do with legislation. So that if there is a fire, the most likely place that a fire will happen is in the kitchen. And so the front door is like right there for the escape. The front door is easily accessible and there's windows that are, make it really accessible from anybody who's potentially in a bedroom or in a communal space to get out. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason for that. From looking at these plans, obviously, should the four people that want to live in this property all know each other, then it makes for a much nicer space. Because I know from like living in house shares in London, it was much nicer sharing a bathroom when I knew all of the other housemates. When I moved into property where I didn't know anyone, I met them all on spare room and we were all sharing that bathroom. I felt like the vibe wasn't as good and people resent each other for like leaving it in an untidy way and stuff like that. So mm. the ideal tenancy, I would all be people that know each other from work, but we don't know if that's gonna happen. As you come up the stairs to the first floor, you have bedroom two. It's quite a decent sized bedroom, it's quite large. Mm -hmm. um, it's on the road, but there is double glazing, so it's not too loud. But again, it's a really good sized bedroom. I think we can potentially squeeze some en suites in here, but we're gonna look to the feasibility of that. Yeah, there's also a little walk-in wardrobe oh, yeah, in bedroom that. two. You'll see on the footage that we insert, like it is completely we say walking wardrobe <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the tiniest thing ever I, I know but for the uk it's quite yeah. nice to have that little yeah. let's just call it a cupboard yes yeah. <laughs> it's not quite a walking some wardrobe. storage and actually above that room is the entrance to the attic and i haven't been up there didn't bother to be honest there's going to be no sort of attic conversion or anything but that is where the attic is up there and again i did think this was a really good size room mm. And is that a TV on the wall, the architect? No. Oh, it's a desk and chair, desk and, and then that's a radiator. That's a radiator yeah. mm -hmm. Then you continue to walk down the corridor and you enter bedroom three. Bedroom three is another really good sized room. And actually, to be honest, I think this is the best room. Okay. Just because it's in the middle of the house, so it's away from the road and it's not directly above the kitchen. Uh, good point, actually. But it is directly above the communal area. And the window to that room looks out to the garden. Yeah. Like you say, rather than the main road, which could be a louder room. Yeah. But um, it's a similar size to bedroom two. Mm -hmm. um, really, really good size. Mm -hmm. And you get decent light through here because you've got the window that, like you said, um, looks out onto the garden. Mm -hmm. It's quite a private room. It's set back a little bit because outside that window, you've got the communal walkway. Yes. So I don't know, but I don't think like anyone from the other house can see you or anything. So it's quite no. a private room. Yeah, that is. You come out of bedroom three and where there used to be more corridor, you used to have a small bedroom and a bathroom. On this plan now, you'll notice that the door to bedroom four begins where bedroom three ends. So imagine that none of that corridor is there. We now walk through a door, we're in bedroom four. Which is probably the smaller of the bedrooms, but the plan was to definitely put an ensuite in that. Building control actually said no to this ensuite for a reason, something to do with pipes. But there is a way of uh, like challenging that and 
trying to get it pushed through. Ideally, this room would have the ensuite, and then that would probably be mo the most desirable of the rooms, just because we've run some test ads and stuff like that on Spare Room and websites like that, and all of the inquiries have come through about the ensuite room. It looks as if most people want an ensuite yeah. uh, in this area. So, if bedroom it, four, double bed, they've all got double beds. Yeah, if it doesn't have the ensuite, it'll still be a big room. Um, yeah. It'll probably be the most private and the most quiet right at the back, back of the house. house. Yeah, true. So that's that's the plan. I think that's a really cool way of turning that space that doesn't look like anything now into a useful space. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at that, how tiny that, that little that room, room was. That room was so tiny. I never would have thought that like this would be the plan. No. When you see it, you're like, oh yeah, it makes total sense. Yeah, and also with the main bathroom was there anyway. Yeah. I just thought it made so much sense for that bathroom, like the, the plumbing work to be there. Yeah. And then our new bathroom below, is, it's all in the same place yeah. kind of thing, in, yeah. in, in alignment with the house. So I don't know why it got denied. I guess we'll soon find out and we'll keep you updated as well. Yeah. We've got a really good relationship with the um, project manager and the build team who are like coordinating all of this. Obviously keep you posted. And I think that's everything. There's nothing here to do with the garden because um, I think we're going to try and do as a low maintenance garden as possible. Anyone who's ever lived in a house share knows that no one wants to take responsibility for like mowing the grass and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's likely that all of that will come up and it will be like gravel stones. Basically Super means that we don't have to garden it. Yeah. Because let's be honest, the tenants aren't going to garden it. They're not, no. no. And you can't blame them. Like, I, They're not going to garden I'm it. They're not going to garden it. No, exactly. You can just about <laughs> so, keep those plants alive outside. Yeah. You need to like lay something underneath so that like the weed, weeds don't grow. Yeah. And then put like the gravel stones and stuff like that. Um, also, there's a shed at the bottom of the garden that no one's been in. So I don't know what's in there. Could be some surprises in that shed. Right, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's the plans and that is the before content of the house. Obviously, we'll keep you posted with the transformation. If you follow us on Instagram at Property Couple UK, I will be posting updates from our build team and the rip out and showing you the process. So that's quite fun. It is really exciting. It's exciting, isn't wait. it? Yeah. It's It'd be awesome to see the before, before and, and after, afters, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And also, isn't it amazing that things are still happening through the time that we're Yeah, we're, right we're lucky, like, we're fortunate. So amazing yeah. that it's able to carry on. If you enjoyed this video, why not watch our video on why we decided to buy a investment property before a home. That's uh, something we filmed today as well. Mm -hmm. I hope it's uploaded before I say this, but we'll soon find out. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!